Of all of the questions that get asked of our humble little farm here in Vermont, Release the Quacken! The one question that we get asked above all else is, why don't your ducks and geese fly away? So let me try to answer that one for you. Let's loose the goose! So we raise ducks and geese on our farm. My goal is actually to raise 150 geese this summer. But right now we're down to about 23 geese and about 20 ducks. They basically comprise our breeding flock. The life cycle of our farm is that we have a lot of birds that we raise in the summer when feed is plentiful and it's easy for them to get fat and healthy. In our tough Vermont winter months though, we bring our flock numbers way down because the feed requirements make it a lot more expensive to raise birds this time of year. Which if you look at ducks and geese who live in the wild, that makes sense, right? Wild ducks and geese are migratory birds, meaning they will hang out in the northern climates during the summer months and then they'll fly south for the winter. And well, Holden Caulfield, I know what you're thinking. Why don't my ducks fly south for the winter? I mean, because when you look at them, right? My birds look pretty cold, a little chilly, especially the little ducks. They're off there huddled in the corner, trying to warm up for the day. I mean, the fences that we have here on our farm are, you know, this part's five feet. This is maybe five and a half feet. It's not exactly crazy high, but that gets down to the core issue. It's because my ducks and geese can't fly. I didn't intentionally mean to rhyme that, but it kind of worked out that way. You know, one ritual we have on our farm is that every spring, this whole pasture will flood. And, and when it does, it attracts Canada gooses. It also attracts wild ducks. And the wild geese and ducks will actually even co-mingle a little bit with my geese and ducks. But as the temperatures start to increase, those wild ducks and geese, oh, I did it again! Those wild ducks and geese, they end up going further north. My birds stay put. And when it comes down to it, they kind of have a good thing going. So why would they leave? You know, they have food. They have fresh water, they have protection. They've lived on my farm pretty much their entire lives, so they don't really know much else. And so even when a transient visitor might stop by, they feel no real motivation to have to like follow along and leave this farm. And so one reason why my ducks and geese don't fly away is because they don't really want to fly away. They're very happy here. And I kind of feel like that's how it should be. You know, my goal as the farmer should be that I'm providing them with an environment where they can thrive and be happy. If this was some sort of miserable containment operation, I think it would actually be much harder to keep them in place. And while they might be a little bit cranky about the climate right now, overall my birds are pretty content. And even when it comes down to the fencing we have at this farm, you know, most of the fencing is actually to keep predators out versus keeping my ducks and geese in. Right now, they have access to nearly 10 acres of pasture that they can wander around and go to. Now, I sometimes need to limit that and direct them from certain parts of the farm just to keep them from, you know, overgrazing or, you know, doing too much poop or too much damage to a certain part of land. But overall, my goal is to give them as much free choice as possible about where they go on the farm. The second reason that my ducks and geese don't fly away is because they're too fat to fly. Look at me! Hi, hi, hi! <laughs> <laughs> You see, most domestic duck and goose breeds are bred for hundreds and thousands of years to have large bodies and have less flight abilities. Like if you were to compare one of my Emden geese to a Canada goose, you'll see that from a size perspective, they're in two different weight classes. And even when it comes down to my ducks, the prevalent breed of duck we have on the farm is the khaki Campbell. The khaki Campbell's a relatively lightweight duck, but when you look at a khaki Campbell duck side by side with like a mallard duck that's wild, the khaki Campbell's look like giants. The other thing that happens to farm ducks and geese versus say wild ducks and geese is when they start to hit those teenage years, you'll notice that your baby birds are gonna start to flap their wings a lot. My ducks and geese do it, wild ducks and geese do it. That's them beginning to develop the muscles that they need in their arms to fly away. In the wild, they'll keep doing this over and over and over again until they're ready to migrate with their parents. But for my birds, again, because they're so happy where they are, they have no real need to migrate. And so rather than spend a lot of time flapping their wings, they end up probably spending even more time just eating some feed. When you think about that mathematical equation of the weight of the bird. A five ounce bird? 
could not carry a one pound coconut. And the relative wing strength that they have to fly away, that equation leaves you with a bird that is just too fat to fly. Now that's not to say that my ducks and geese never fly at all. With the flapping of their wings, they can get like a couple of inches off the ground. And even if I were to like pick up one of my ducks and toss it in the air. All right, girl, go be with the rest of the flock. Could flap and float for, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 feet. Like I've had situations in the past where like a duck or a goose might like hop over a four foot fence. I, like I remember the time that I was hatching out geese naturally and I was trying to separate the gander and a few of the other female geese from the mother goose. And that family of geese refused to be broken up. And the geese that I ended up putting out into the pasture ended up hopping the fence and flying back to the barn to be with the mother goose. In case you're wondering, geese have a very strong family unit instinct. So it's not to say that my ducks and geese can never fly. It's just that they don't really fly much, and when they do, they can't go very far. And to answer that question that started this video, I'm not really worried about keeping my ducks and geese from flying away. You know, a lot of times folks will ask me if I clip the wings of my birds, and I actually don't do that either because I just don't find a need to it. It's sort of a waste of time. <laughs> Now when it comes to my chickens, I have to cut their wings pretty regularly. I'm finding that the chickens are constantly hopping fences. Now it doesn't matter if that fence is four feet high or six feet high or even eight feet high. They really seem to have an ability to figure out their way to get up and over a fence. And so oftentimes when I have an escape minded chicken, I'll just scoop that bird up and I will find her flight feathers, which are these longer feathers out here. And I'll just cut right along that line and that will keep them from flying away for at least a month or two. I found that it works best if you only do one wing because then when the bird tries to fly, it tries to go in a circle and it keeps them in balance for longer. If you try to actually cut both wings, what happens is they grow back pretty much at the same pace and they'll be able to fly sooner. So it's a pretty easy problem to manage. I just don't bother to do it with my ducks and geese because number one, I don't really have that problem and number two, I have a lot of ducks and geese. All right, down you go, Carmen. <laughs> Would you guys look at that? Over here you can see our pond. It looks like Toby's been peeing in the pool. You like to use that spot, huh, buddy? <laughs> Is that your favorite spot to go? That's cool, man. I don't mind. Lately, we've been getting a fair amount of snow, and I'd say there's about a foot and a half of snow on the pasture there. That is really good news to me because what I need right now is to keep accumulating snow on this pasture so that when it all melts, it all drains down into our pond and it fills it up for the summer. Last year, our man-made duck pond was a pretty big failure, but in the fall, I ended up going through with my buddy Alfred and we lined the entire pond with bentonite, which is this clay substance that seals the pond in. And so now my hope is that it's gonna retain water much better this year. And you'll see this entire pasture actually flood at a certain point, which is kind of cool. Like I said earlier in this video, the birds love it. All right, let's check in on the hobo cat situation. So the barn cat continues to be around. Um, didn't look like he ate the food last night or used the trap. I've actually started to call the barn cat Victor barn cat because I think it's a male. And you know, it's like Victor, like the mousetrap brand. I actually got a YouTube comment last night from, from one of you guys, which was super helpful. The comment was that I should actually seal the back part of this trap so that he can't see the backside of it and it's like a hole that he has to climb into. And so I'm gonna actually try to give that a shot tonight. But for right now, I'm gonna spring the trap so I don't accidentally catch Pablo barn cat during the day. I've been keeping him in the basement uh, when I go inside. I'll let them out for the day. And I really also wanna say thank you to all of you guys who offered good helpful suggestions about what I should do about the cat. The plan that I'm working against right now is I'm gonna to try to catch him. And when I catch him, I'll take him to the vet. We'll check for microchips, we'll check to make sure he's healthy. If he needs to get fixed, I'll end up getting him fixed. And then once that happens, I'll end up taking him back here and training him as a barn cat here on the farm. As we've all kind of noticed, right, we need more mousers here on the farm. And the fact that a mouser just sort of showed up on our doorstep seems like uh, fate. It's time for our videos check in with Toby Dog. How are you doing, buddy boy? You good? Yeah. You are one good pepperoni pizza. Hey, Spicy. Hey, Jemima. How's it going, girls? what sort of eggs we got this morning. Looks like we just got the one egg. Did I get it in time? Well, that's a bummer. It looks like this one's already frozen and cracked a bit. Lately, I've been getting a lot of emails from you guys wanting to buy duck and goose eggs for hatching. And right now I'm actually not selling them, 
but I will a little bit later this spring. What I'm doing right now is I just need to wait for the, the birds to start laying a little bit more. Um, the geese haven't started laying yet, but I expect that to happen soon because I'm starting to see a lot of mating activity. And the ducks are really only laying sporadically. By the time we get into March, I expect it to go full steam. If you guys want to know when we open up the sales for the duck and goose eggs, the best thing I would suggest you do is sign up for our mailing list. I'll leave a link for it down below. So if you want to get the news first on our hatching eggs and duck and goose eggs, and even if you just want news about the farm, be sure to sign up for our mailing list. And I promise not to spam you. I hope you guys have enjoyed my answer to why my ducks and geese don't fly. If you're curious about more miscellaneous about ducks and geese, check out this video I made about why male ducks don't quack. It's kind of a weird answer.